Hello everyone, Melody here, Mama of Four in our blended family of six. Welcome to Homeschool Happy Hour. Today we're going to talk about retroactive planning. What is it? Why do we do it? Before we get started, if you are new here, like I said, my name's Melody. I have been homeschooling for nine years. We are going into our 10th year of homeschooling and I love sharing all things homeschool, homeschool curriculum on this channel. So if that is something that interests you, please take a second, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel and follow along and drop a comment in the box below and let me know that you're new here. I love to chat all things homeschool. Today we're going to talk a little bit about retroactive planning. If you have seen some of my other videos and what our plan is and how we do it, I have mentioned that a few times. but. I wanted to talk about it more specifically. Over the years of homeschooling, I have tried many different ways to plan our schedule, our day, and to run our homeschool. In the beginning, I had my planner, I had written out in the planner, in pen, everything that I was going to do. And I quickly realized that that was a bad idea because plans change. So fast forward, I went to using pencil so I could erase easily and rewrite things as they changed. Okay. That worked okay. But then I realized, oh my gosh, I'm having to do a lot of erasing and rewriting because life, you make a plan and then it doesn't go exactly like you wanted to. And then if you've planned out for any length of time, it's like this snowball effect. You missed Tuesday's work. So now you not only have to rewrite Tuesday's work, but now Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, etc., is all going to adjust. So then I came up with this genius way of doing things. And I was like, ta-da, the sticky note. Who doesn't love the sticky note? So I would write out all my plans on these little tiny sticky notes that would fit in the squares of my homeschool day. This makes it really easy if you want to see what your plan is, but still be able to adjust. So if something changed, I would just peel up that sticky note, move it over. I could peel up as many sticky notes as I wanted to and just move them down the line. That was a really successful way of planning for us. A couple years ago, I heard about uh, retroactive planning, which is what I do now and what I will probably continue to do. What this means is, no more pen, no more pencil, no more sticky notes. I do not write down what it is we are going to do specifically. In our home, we do have a routine. And so I know we are going to work on math and we are going to work on history. And there are times when I work as a substitute teacher at the school in which my youngest child needs a little bit more structure. So I will write down, today I need you to and I will write down page 124 through 126 in this book. So I will give her more specific structure when I am working as a substitute, if she's going to be working on her materials more independently without me supervising her directly on them. There really is no one right way to plan in even the same family because every child is different. With my other homeschooler, she's good to go. I can just say, I need you to work on these subjects and she'll do it. However, we can't just do the work and have no record of it. Every state is different as far as record keeping. Ours does not specifically require me to keep records of what we've done. However, I strongly recommend keeping records of what you have done. It might seem like you'll never need it and hopefully you never will, but life changes, things happen, and you don't know, and it's just so much easier to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Because of this, we do the retroactive planning. I have a space in their book where it says math, and then instead of me writing what they are going to do, they write after what they did. Does that make sense? It's super simple. I don't think it could be simpler. It's not a complicated thing at all. It's basically just keeping record of what you have done so that you can look back and see what they've worked on. In the elementary years, again, this is really for your own personal record keeping just in case, unless you're in a state that requires more intense record keeping. 
when you get to the high school, junior high levels, and you're doing college prep, which I strongly believe all homeschoolers should be given what they need in order to take the college path if they want to, because I want my kids and I feel like all kids should have as many options. We don't know what direction they're going to take. Do they have to go to college? No, they might do a trade school or military or something else or a combination of those things. But I want them to have what they need should they choose that path. And so for those transcripts, I will have a course that has a description of what the course is at the beginning of the year. And then they will have their records in their planner showing what they did throughout the year so that I can go back and reference it as needed in order to build the transcripts for college courses. I did do a video about what our planning was going to be like for this coming year if you want more detail, but just to give you an idea for the retroactive planning, this planner is for the prisoner. She's going to be a 10th slash 9th grader for this coming school year. And so she's doing her own record keeping with my supervision. And it's it's super simple. I've got this, I'm just gonna open it up to a random page. It's blank. If I feel the need, I might write a week's goals at the top. If I saw last week, hey, we really need to focus more on this, this next week, I would flip and be like, oh, next week we're gonna focus some more on this. But otherwise I will have subject areas, subject areas written here. And then she's just gonna fill in what she did. She can do that. It doesn't need to be a huge description. It doesn't need to be complicated. For my younger kiddo, Bean Bean, she does need more guidance. So for her booklet, I'm also just opening it to a random page, also blank. For her, I will put priorities for this week so that she knows what we're really focusing on. And then this has two columns. In the first column, I will put the things that I want her to work on, depending on whether I am subbing that day or have something else crazy going on, will determine how detailed that is. It might just say 30 minutes of math, or it might say piano. That might be the extent of the description and then she can work through that as she sees fit. Or it might say language arts, page 89, questions one through seven. It can range depending on our day, our mood, what we're doing. But I don't have to worry about spending a ton of time planning out and scheduling what they're working on. We just kind of can go with it as we go with it each week. When I first started homeschooling, that planning piece took a lot of time. And I do still put time into choosing the curriculum or the curricula that we're using and putting together our routine and our outline. But the time put into that, it's, it's a fraction of the time spent by me putting that together. And then when we don't accomplish a certain goal, I don't have to get stressed about it. It's not like, well, we didn't get this done. So now we need to push, push just to get it done. Because I tend to feel overwhelmed if I have a to-do list that isn't completed. And so in order to remove that overwhelm, I remove the to-do list, so to speak. Retroactive planning has allowed our homeschool to be more relaxed and more productive. You can have both. I'm not stressed about what we didn't get done. The kids aren't stressed about what we didn't get done. We're not arguing with each other or fighting about what we need to get done. We are just doing what we can, working through it, getting distracted and enjoying those distractions and learning a lot because everybody is really in it rather than focused on something outside of what we're learning. If you have any questions about retroactive planning or any of our other things that I mentioned here, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, check out some of my other videos, or as always, drop a comment in the box below and let me know. Maybe I can have an answer for you. Maybe somebody else can have an answer for you. Remember, we all do things differently and that is why homeschool is amazing. Keep it simple, keep it fun, and I guarantee you will love homeschooling a lot more than if you were stressing about all the little details. That is all I have for you today and I will catch you next time.